Millions of Christians are about to leave the church. The prophecy will be fulfilled. Watch this video to the end and find out the worst event on this earth, one of the scariest predictions in the Bible. Christianity around the world is changing. Have you seen that? It's not just something you're imagining. It's a significant prophecy from the Bible about the end times. What will lead to this demonic influence? Did you know one out of every 10 Americans has left the faith since the year 2000? 30 million people in total. These were folks who went to church regularly and prayed often. None of these 30 million ever planned to leave the faith, but now many of them don't even believe God exists. How does this make you feel? I'll be honest with you. It makes me sad to think about losing our brothers and sisters. We are in a spiritual battle, and it would be perfect for the kingdom to have more people fighting for it. A lot of people are becoming agnostics, atheists, and spiritualists. Is this normal? And did the Bible ever talk about this? The Bible lets us know of this interesting prophecy. The Bible says that there will be a huge turning away from the truth at the end of times. This big turning away is called the great apostasy in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. In the KJV, it's called the falling away. And in the ESV, it's called the rebellion. An apostasy means people are rebelling and giving up on the truth. At the end of times, there'll be a complete rejection of what God has revealed, making the already lost world fall away even more. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Now in regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to meet Him, we ask you, brothers and sisters, not to be quickly unsettled or alarmed either by a so-called prophetic revelation of a spirit or a message or a letter alleged to be from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has already come. Let no one in any way deceive or entrap you, for that day will not come unless the apostasy comes first. That is the great rebellion, the abandonment of the faith by professed Christians. And the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, the Antichrist, the one who is destined to be destroyed. Many people do not know that Paul also gave great prophecies. Paul wrote to the Thessalonians because false teachers had confused them about the end times. Some were saying that the day of the Lord has already come. Because of this, people were afraid. Paul then told them of the signs to come first before the end. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, Paul explains that the day of the Lord time when God will judge the world will only come after two things. First, there must be a big falling away or a great rebellion. Second, the man of lawlessness, also known as the Antichrist, must be revealed. Many speeches have been given about the Antichrist, but many forget that before this, there will be a great falling away. Every period has people who turn away, but in the end times, this falling away will be total and worldwide. The whole world will be in rebellion against God and His Son, Jesus. Every rebellion needs a leader, and the Antichrist will step up during this global apostasy. We believe this happens after the church has been taken up to heaven. Jesus warned His disciples about the end times in Matthew chapter 24, verses 10 through 12. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other, and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. These are signs of the great apostasy in the last days. When we talk about apostasy here, we're not talking about people leaving their country or government. Instead, we mean a turn away from true beliefs, proper worship, church rules, and living a good life. The apostle is talking about a big falling away, not just a few people, but a widespread one that would make way for the rise of the Antichrist that man of sin. He had already warned them about this when he was with them so that they wouldn't be surprised or upset. We should notice that as soon as Christianity began in the world, there was a falling away in the church. Soon after the promise, the builders of Babel defied God. After the covenant with Noah, Abraham's descendants turned away in Egypt. After the Israelites settled in Canaan, they abandoned God and worshiped Baal when the first generation was gone. After God's covenant with David, his descendants turned to other gods. Even after returning from captivity, there was a significant drop in faith, as shown in the stories of Ezra and Nehemiah. So, 
It's no surprise that after Christianity began, there would be a falling away. But if people stop listening to God, what will they listen to instead? But what will they listen to if they no longer listen to God? 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1-3 through 3 says, But the Holy Spirit explicitly and unmistakably declares that in later times, some will turn away from the faith, paying attention instead to deceitful and seductive spirits and doctrines of demons, misled by the hypocrisy of liars, whose consciences are seared as with the branding iron, leaving them incapable of ethical functioning, who forbid marriage and advocate abstaining from certain kinds of foods which God has created to be gratefully shared by those who believe and have a clear knowledge of the truth. The Holy Spirit warns clearly that in the future, some people will turn away from their faith. This warning could come from the Old Testament spirit or the spirit in the New Testament prophets, or even both. Both the Old Testament and New Testament talk about the future problems caused by people who turn away from Christ in true worship. Some people will turn away from the faith, but not everyone. Even in tough times, God will keep some people who still follow Him. They will turn away from the faith that was given to the saints, which is the true teaching of the gospel. They will listen to misleading people who pretend to be guided by the Spirit, but are not. As 1 John 4, 1 says, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, meaning don't trust everyone who says they speak for the Spirit. Now notice this. It will be done by the dishonesty of those who tell lies, who work for Satan, and spread these false ideas with lies and tricks. They pretend to honor Christ, but actually fight against His work and mess up His rules. Let's break this down in a simple way. Don't be shocked when people turn away from their faith in the future because the Spirit told us it would happen. The Spirit is God, and only God can know what will happen far in the future. Even though it seems uncertain to us because it depends on people's choices and desires. The Spirit's predictions are clear and certain, unlike the vague and unsure predictions of ancient false gods. It's reassuring to know that not everyone will fall away from faith, only some will. People who trick others often pretend to speak for the Spirit, and this shows that many believe this is a good way to make people think they are speaking for God. Before people can leave their faith and lead others away, they must become hardened and ignore their own conscience. When people make rules that go against what God has said, like forbidding marriage or certain foods or insisting on worshiping saints and angels, it shows they have strayed from the faith. Now, after talking about their false fasting, the apostle will continue. The Bible really gives us a warning about this. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 through 4. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine and accurate instruction that challenges them with God's truth wanting to have their ears tickled with something pleasing. They will accumulate for themselves many teachers, one after another chosen, to satisfy their own desires and to support the errors they hold. They will turn their ears away from the truth and will wander off into myths and man-made fictions and will accept the unacceptable. Timothy knows people by their nature, don't want to hear what God has to say. Instead, they prefer to hear things that make them feel good, like what they want to hear, just to satisfy their own desires. They will choose teachers who tell them what they want to hear. This shows us that just because a teacher is popular doesn't mean they are the best. We shouldn't think a teacher is good just because lots of people like them. And we shouldn't think they are true to God's word just because they're famous. And they will turn to made up stories. When people stop believing in God's word, they often start believing in crazy stories. If someone rejects God's truth, they don't just believe in nothing, they will believe in anything. The falling away. The word the makes it really important. This is not just any falling away, but the big and final rebellion. Some people think that falling away means the rapture of the church, where people leave on their own, but that's not what it means. In the Bible's Greek, the word for falling away always as a negative and sinful meaning. A big end times rebellion doesn't mean there can also be a big end times revival. Some Christians are doubtful about a great revival in the last days, or even see apostasy as a sign that the end is near. We see a lot of rejection of Jesus, 
Revelation chapter 9, verses 20 through 21. The rest of mankind, who are not killed by these plagues, did not repent of the works of their hands, so as not to worship demons and the idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders, nor of their witchcraft, nor of their sexual immorality, nor of their thefts. However, in the end, there will be a great acceptance of Jesus. Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 through 14. After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude which no one could count, from every nation and all the tribes, peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, and palm branches were in their hands, and they cried out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing, glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, power, and might belong to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders responded, saying to me, These who are clothed in the white robes, who are they? And where have they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation, and they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. People are beginning to change. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. The word perilous conveys the idea of troubles, difficulty, and stressful situations. This kind of atmosphere will characterize the final days. The word perilous was used in classical Greek to refer to dangerous wild animals and the raging sea. Paul describes the characteristics of the last days, not as the times themselves, but as the terrible people in those times. The hardness or danger of this time, in Paul's view, is not war, famine, disease, or any other calamities or ills that befall the church, but rather the wicked and depraved ways of men. The last days is a broad term in the New Testament, so broad that it could be argued that the last days began with the birth of the church on Pentecost. Some believe that paying attention to the last days or biblical prophecy is frivolous, but we should be able to discern when the last days are, or at least when world situations are like the Bible described they would be in the last days. In Matthew chapter 16, verses 1 through 4, Jesus chastised the religious leaders of his day for failing to understand or refusing to understand the significance of their times. Hypocrites, you know how to discern the face of the sky. You cannot discern the signs of the times. Matthew chapter 16, verse 3. It's possible that Jesus would tell some Christians today the same thing he told people before about not knowing the last days in his return. Paul explains what people will be like in the last days. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people, turn away. Men will be lovers of themselves. This is definitely typical of our present age when people are motivated to love themselves. Love of self is the primary sin, from with all others flow. The point of man makes his own will the center of life. Divine and human associates are destroyed, and obedience to God and charity to men both become impossible. Men will be lovers of money. The love of money is nothing new, but today individuals have the ability to chase our love of money like never before. Men will be unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving. These traits have characterized humankind to varying degrees since Adam. These things, according to Paul, will be especially prevalent in the last days. Men will be brutal. Cruelty and harshness have always been around, but Paul, guided by the Holy Spirit, said that the last days would have a special kind of harshness. Men will be traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, 
These features are all about one thing, ourselves. Men are traitors because of themselves. They are stubborn because of themselves. They are proud because of themselves. And they love pleasure more than they love God because of themselves. We are not required to choose between pleasure and God. Serving God is the greatest joy. From such people, turn away. This command to avoid people who exhibit the characteristics listed in this list is especially difficult in our current age. People who do the things on this list are not only common today, but they are often cultural heroes as well. Christians have a simple responsibility to turn away, not only from these attitudes, but also from those who practice them. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 6. Those who creep into households. Paul was aware that such dangers existed in the world during his lifetime and that they would become even more prevalent in the last days before the return of Jesus Christ. On the other hand, he appeared to be particularly concerned that these would find their way into households. It is one thing for such evil to exist in the world. It is quite another to welcome it into your own home. One ought to examine themselves to determine whether or not they are, in fact, one of the captives referred to by Paul, who are held captive by the influence of this end times rejection of God and celebration of self. Try going a week without bringing anything that is associated with the spirit of the last days into your home and observing whether or not it is possible for you to break free of the chains that are holding you to those things. Paul also says, led away by various lusts. Clearly, the spirit of the last days appeals to us by arousing various lusts within us. It appeals to our desire to be stimulated or to have our desires for comfort, wealth, or status satisfied. Indeed, the spirit of the last days has a problem with the idea of true truth altogether. Timothy soaked up Paul's faith, long-suffering and love. You could see in Paul that he possessed a faith that not everyone possessed, and Timothy desired to capture it. Paul was patient with the little aggravations of people in life in a special way, and he had a love that made him stand out. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 13 through 15 says, but evil people and impostors will proceed from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. You, however, continue in the things you have learned and become convinced of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the sacred writings, which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse. Evil men are open enemies of Jesus, Impostors are those who appear good and are thought to be fine, but are actually destructive forces among Jesus' followers. Motives are important, but we can overestimate their importance at times. Many people have been harmed by people who are sincerely deceived and attempted to do wrong things out of good intentions. And because others see their good intentions, they accept their dangerous deceptions. We cannot always judge others solely on their motives. We must also consider the truth. But. There is hope for us, Paul says, but you must continue in the things which you have learned. There will be dangerous times and dangerous men in the last days. We must continue in the things which you have learned. There will be difficulties and even persecution as you follow the Lord, but you must persevere in what you have learned. You must continue to practice what you have learned. The central theme is faithfulness to God's word. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. There's no other book like the Bible, and there never will be. The grass withers, the flower fades, but our Lord's word endures forever. What else comes close to the Bible? There's no other book like it in terms of continuity and consistency. There's no other book like it in terms of honesty. There's no other book like it in terms of circulation. There's no other book like it in terms of survival. There's no other book like it in terms of influence and changing power. What are the consequences of nations turning away from God? Psalm 33:12 says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, 
the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. Here, the psalmist talks about Israel. God picked Israel to be the nation through which he would bring his promised Savior. God promised to provide for, bless, and protect the Israelites if they followed him. But the Old Testament shows us what happened when they turned away from him. Israel's story teaches us what can happen to a nation when its people stop following God. Many ancient nations no longer exist because they faced God's judgment for their sins. Edom, Assyria, Sodom were all destroyed because of their evil actions. The Hittites, Moabites, and Philistines are gone too because they wouldn't stop rebelling against God. God blessed Israel when they honored him. He brought them into a land flowing with milk and honey. When they obeyed him, he promised to give them everything they needed and keep them safe. He wanted them to live in peace and happiness. He told them to keep his Sabbaths so they could rest. But when Israel followed evil kings and turned to false gods, God sent famines and disease to the land he loved. He learned from this that God enjoys blessing his people when they do what's right. We follow his laws. We're safe from a lot of the pain and trouble that Satan wants to bring. But when a country stops following God, it makes up its own rules. God stops protecting it. Then that country has to face the problems it asked for. Romans chapter 1, verses 18 through 32 tells us what happens to people and nations that ignore God and change what is right and wrong. Things like homosexuality, out of control desires, and idol worship are part of God's judgment on a nation that is turned away from Him. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of people who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because that which is known about God is evident within them. For God made it evident to them. For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes, that is, His eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived, being understood by what has been made, so that they are without excuse. For even though they knew God, they did not honor Him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their reasonings, and their senseless hearts were darkened Claiming to be wise, they became fools. Romans chapter 1, verses 18 through 22. The good news is that God knows who belongs to Him and promises to reward them, even when everyone else turns away. Malachi chapter 3, verses 13 through 18 has one of the most comforting messages in the Old Testament. It reminds us that God is always watching. He knows everything, and He will judge fairly. Even if a whole nation turns away from God, people within that nation can still follow Him and be sure that their names are written in God's special book of remembrance. How should a Christian react to all these prophecies? From a Christian viewpoint, our first response should be to take a deep breath and stay calm. The world will end someday, and Christ will return when He is ready. But right now, everyone is just a moment away from meeting God personally. Born-again Christians can be sure of their salvation and trust God with everything else. We can try to understand the signs of the times. Matthew chapter 16, verse 3, no one knows for sure when the end will come. Instead of focusing on dates and rumors, we should focus on sharing the gospel with as many people as we can. The world may be sinking. Before we worry about how or when it will end, we need to help more people get to safety. Why is it important to not give up meeting together? The Christian life isn't meant to be lived alone, but with other believers. That's why Hebrews chapter 10 verses 24 through 25 says, think about how we can encourage each other to love and do good deeds. Let's not stop meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let's keep encouraging one another, especially as we see the day coming closer, to grow in our faith and keep going strong. We need our fellow Christians to lift us up. The writer of Hebrews noticed that many people who said they were Christians were losing their trust in God. Hard times and problems might have made some people stop meeting together. The answer was to start gathering again. Regular, real-life time spent with other Christians is very important for growing in our faith and staying strong. If we, like the writer of Hebrews, believe that Christ's return is near, we'll see why it's so important to encourage each other in our faith. But if we stop meeting together, how can we expect to give and get support? Christians should always come together because we are part of one big family, God's family. 
or the household of faith. As members of God's household, we should love each other, be friendly, kind, and humble. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3 says, Therefore, if there is any encouragement in Christ, if any consolation of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and compassion, make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility consider one another as more important than ourselves. Paul told the believers in Philippi, let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. God wants us to care for our brothers and sisters in Christ. It's not just for our benefit, but to make the whole body of Christ stronger than the Bible says. Do not give up meeting together. God has given us special gifts. For the common good, we should use these gifts to help the church, to equip his people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 21. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, or again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. We can only live out our faith and become all God wants us to be when we keep meeting together with other Christians.